What is vertical farming and why is it important for the future of humanity? I'm Rosario Iacon and today I want to talk to you about vertical farming, what it is, how it works, advantages and disadvantages and what, and what Casvesta wants to do for vertical farmers. By 2050, we're gonna be 9 billion people living on this planet. 80% of us will live in urban centers. Agriculture will need to feed this increasing amount of humans while coping with, with climate change. One possible solution is the production of food inside the urban center. This idea is called urban farming. It's not a new idea, it was already dreamt in 1999 by A.B. Walker. Imagine a skyscraper where on each floor there was a farm. The idea is still there. In 2009, Kobo uh, imagined a skyscraper that was a huge um, urban farm to be placed in the Bay of New York. Apparently, French people have a passion for putting big buildings in the Bay of New York. One particular application of urban farming is vertical farming. Vertical farming is the growth of food and plants on staked layers inside a building. It uses a this used building with the uh, um, conditioned environment and, uh, inside, artificial lighting, and the soil is replaced by, uh, by, a, by, a by a nutrient solution. It's called soilless uh, growth of, of the plants. There are different systems that can be used to grow the plant without the soil. We can use, for example, hydroponic, where the plant is grown in a water with a solution of nutrients. We can also use aeroponics. The plant is suspended and the water is just sprayed on the roots. And then we can also use aquaculture, where the plant is staying in the water and fishes are living in the water and feeding the, and feeding the plant. At the moment, there are some uh, vertical, um, vertical farming system on the market. The most simple is the one that you can put at home, is a domestic uh, vertical farming. Then there is a market space vertical farming. There are vertical farming systems that you can find inside market shops. And then there are indoor farms that are built inside disused buildings, mostly industrial buildings, to produce food for the urban area. There are several advantages of using vertical farming. First of all, there is no soil, there are no pests or um, environmental stresses, so we don't need to spray the plant with nasty chemicals. We don't need to prepare the soil, transport, uh, transport anything from point to point, so we reduce the use of fuel and then the production of CO2. The vertical farming is the growth of food on several uh, layers, as we said, so the, the amount of food that we can produce per unit of area is increased. Also, it's, it's possible to produce this food 365 year, days a year because, as we said, we, we completely control the environment, which means we are more likely to be able to feed the, this increasing population in the future. Of course, there are some disadvantages in vertical farming. The, the limit is uh, feasibility at the moment. One of these is the high requirement of energy. Then we have the fact that it is difficult to uh, handle and manage the CO2 in the stacked layers of a vertical farming. On top of this, there is just a limited range of plants that we can grow inside a vertical farm, mostly green leaves. And in the end, uh, the, um, the nutrient value of a plant grown in vertical farming is a little lower than the plant, the same plant grown on open lands. Uh, so, should we give up on using vertical farming to produce food? No, because we believe these problems can be solved. On one side, they can be solved by using new technologies and improve the energy efficiency of vertical farms. On the other side, we believe that there should be a biological effort to create plants that are better adapted to vertical farms. And this can be done by introducing new plants in vertical farming by using breeding. This is what we want to do at Casvesta. We want to breed and create new plants that are better adapted to a vertical farm. A plant that is better adapted to vertical farm is better using the CO2, is using less energy and less nutrients to grow, and is producing the same amount of food with the same quality in a reduced amount of space. Thank you for listening and I see you soon.